think also WPAs, I saw this as well in terms of their faculty as well as themselves feel that sense of vulnerability when they try a multimodal assignment because they recognize that many students bring in more experience with these different composing practices than perhaps they do. So I think recognizing that this multimodal assignments provide an opportunity to meet students where they are and to show them some vulnerability if you may not be as familiar with the technology uh, or teaching your faculty the technology, but it creates an enriching, uh, empowering experience for all parties that I think deserves attention. One of the things that we found, you know, as many WPAs find as they're working or encouraging multimodality in their writing programs is that instructors um, have varying degrees of comfort with technology and some are, you know, very comfortable having students work across different software programs and platforms. Uh, some are more nervous because they feel like they maybe can't support those uh, students working with those platforms and programs as effectively or they are anxious because students are more, perhaps more comfortable with those programs and platforms than they are. And so one of the things that we found in implementing this uh, assignment across our curriculum was that stu or instructors who were the most nervous about technology actually had an easier time of it by leaving the options for students wide open so that students could choose from, from a variety of software programs um, as they worked to build and create their own projects. They could choose one that fit them and that really released the burden of the technology support from the instructor, right? So the instructors could really focus on the content and helping students do the analysis and the critical thinking and the, the writing and composition of pulling all of that together without having to worry about supporting students through any technical troubleshooting or software issues, right? Then on the other hand, we had a lot of instructors who felt a little bit more comfortable engaging with the technology and wanted to be a little bit more hands-on. And so we found that they chose to limit the design platforms and programs available to students and to give them just maybe one or two or three software programs that they could use to create their projects. And in those instances, what the instructors often did was to experiment with them themselves so that they felt pretty comfortable working in these different software programs. And then they could work more directly alongside their students. So there was really a range of possibilities available to instructors, and what we found was that um, as long as we left room for instructors to engage at whatever level they were comfortable with, they were able to work through the unit and work through the assignment with their students pretty successfully. I wasn't so worried about the technology and platforms. I actually think I knew my students would probably be bringing a lot of that knowledge to the classroom themselves, certainly some more than others, but I was less concerned with teaching them how to use different platforms as much as teaching them what it means to compose multimodally for different audiences with different tools and resources available to them. I was initially intimidated. There was like a big list of uh, the different um, types of website creating platforms that students could use and that was a little bit intimidating to me, but I ended up narrowing down their choices and I think that the students appreciated it. They, I think they got a lot out of it. I think most of them reported that they really liked that unit. They had a lot of fun with it. Um, so I think overall it went pretty well. Yeah. Because it was a brand new assignment, um, there weren't really um, examples or exemplars of the genre that I could give them uh, that other students had created. And so what I chose to do was to go ahead and create a sample virtual museum exhibit. And what that allowed me to do um, is to be familiar with some of the software. I didn't make one in every single um, possible modality, but it allowed me to be familiar with some of the problems that they might encounter in working with Adobe Spark in particular, which is the one that I used. I, I did it in a, a Friday afternoon, so I don't think I spent more than three or four hours on it, um, and I'm a pretty fast writer. Um, but it was interesting to think about because the way that I, I wanted it to be both a sample um, of what a virtual museum exhibit could look like, but also a sort of assignment prompt, so that if they weren't looking on Canvas, they could be looking at the example and know, this is the required word count, this is the citation style. Um, and so it had examples of, here's an artifact, here's how I'm doing an object label to analyze that artifact and, and put it in a narrative. Um, but here's also how long that, how that uh, object label needs to be. Um, and so 
Um, some of it I was still kind of in teacher mode, but um, in terms of figuring out what actually looks nice on an Adobe Spark website, um, I, I played around with it quite a bit, and I think that enabled me when I um, was walking through that process with students um, to give them some pointers 